Welcome to Friday Night, but first, this is all the news you need. A chilling last post from the Aussie brothers missing in Mexico as their family describes a gentle soul and a big koala. Sponsor staff stood down without pay for April and told to go on the dole. No surprise as housing affordability hits an all-time low in Australia, but buyers are not being put off. An ex-police officer accused of lying on the stand in a high-profile sports star's trial. The US warns of North Korean hackers targeting journalists and charities. Chaos in Centrelink, the video that exposes the danger inside government offices. A car park turned into a makeshift domestic violence shelter. As it buckets down from Bundaberg to Mount Gambia, a good reminder to avoid floodwaters. OK, that got bad very quickly. And from Coogee to base camp, the Aussie connection to the highest marathon in the world. Welcome to Thames Lake News with Ursula Hayden. A big koala and a gentle soul. That's how two missing brothers from Perth are being remembered by their family tonight after they went missing on a Mexican surfing adventure. Local police have found a burnt-out ute and blood after making three arrests in the mystery. Brothers forever in search of the perfect break. But tonight, they need a breakthrough. Callum and Jake Robinson are missing in Mexico, along with an American mate. Local police now have three in custody. Towering at six foot four, Callum had travelled to the US for lacrosse. His family saying he's widely known in the US as the big koala. We think of him as our big, soft, friendly giant. As for younger brother Jake, the 30-year-old doctor had just taken a job at Geelong Hospital. This follows recent roles working in regional hospitals around Australia always with a surf beach located nearby. Jake is such a gentle soul and would want no harm. Jake had travelled to San Diego to meet Callum before driving down to Mexico. Callum posting parts of their travels on his social media, including this white ute. A similar one has now been found burnt out near where the trio went missing. Police arresting a 25-year-old woman yesterday. She had one of the brothers' phones. Today, two more arrests. The Australian Federal Police are working uh, in support of local authorities. Tonight, the Robinson parents are preparing to travel to Mexico. Surfing is a passion they both share. Our only comfort right now is that they were together doing something they passionately loved. Signing off their statement to the media, Martin and Deborah Robinson. But to these missing brothers, it's just mum and dad. Paris Martin for 10 News First. The situation at Bonza has taken a nosedive with the embattled airline now telling its employees they won't be getting paid for the month of April. Last night, staff members were told that not only are they being stood down without pay for the foreseeable future, they will not be getting wages owed to them for their work over the past month. They're being advised to apply for government support. Whether they'll even have jobs to return to once Bonza's administrators are done remains to be seen. Our housing crisis has launched to a new catastrophe. It has now never been a worse time to try and buy a house with Labor's ambitious plan to fix the crisis all but in ruin. Political reporter Chloe Boris joins me now. And Chloe, getting into the housing market has never been this hard. That won't be a surprise to anyone. But what hope do young Australians actually have of achieving it? Well, look, if you start saving for a deposit now, by the year 2034, you should have one. That is how bad the situation is. The report found on average for Australians it now takes 10 years to save for that 20% deposit and that's because the prices are just so expensive. House prices up 42% since January 2020, rent up 35% and the problem is supply. There are a lot of reasons for that. There's fast migration, high interest rates, skill shortages and we are constantly hearing about builders and construction companies going under. Now, the federal government had a plan to fix this. It said it was going to build 1.2 million homes over the next five years, but the report says it's going to fall short of that 
by about a quarter of a million homes. So there is definitely pressure on the federal government tonight. It says it's going to be working with the states that there are incentives for them to cut red tape and get those approvals done faster. And yet, Chloe, there was a 3% increase in new loans taken out in March for new homes and investment properties. It seems some buyers aren't holding back. Yeah, so that's a combination between the number of loans and then the value of them, which is going up in line with those housing prices. But the surge was really driven by first home buyers who are deciding, let's jump in now, let's not wait for interest rates to come down. They're worried that the house prices are just going to keep going up. But there are concerns that the Reserve Bank's not going to be too happy about this because their whole agenda is to slow down spending to fight inflation. And the RBA is actually meeting again next week. It's widely expected they will keep rates on hold, but then there are really divided opinions on where to from there. Some economists think it'll go up later in the year. Some think it will be coming down. But, you know, there are fewer Reserve Bank meetings this year, but probably still the same level of anxiety for mortgage holders. There certainly is. Thank you very much, Chloe. A former police officer has been charged with perjury relating to a sexual assault case involving NRL star Jack DeBellin. In a statement, New South Wales Police said the former detective senior constable has been accused of giving false evidence under oath. DeBellin and co-accused Callan Sinclair were found not guilty. Slain Coffs Harbour surfer Kai, Kai Schaefer is being remembered by loved ones for his cheeky nature and heart of gold. The 22-year-old was fatally stabbed at a beach car park in Coffs Harbour yesterday morning. As his devastated family comes to terms with their loss, police are tonight still hunting his killer. A young man and his loyal dog who loved the ocean. Happy birthday, dear. Kai Schaefer turned that love into a passion for surfing at the beach where his life was taken too soon. Torn to shreds. It's just, yeah, can't comprehend exactly what's happened. I was shocked um, and then bore my eyes out. People we love, you know, pass sometimes, you know, sometimes it's old age, sometimes it's a terrible accident, you know, and for our family right now, it's just murder. It's just a senseless murder. Kai was stabbed at least eight times and found near his car. He was rushed to Coffs Harbour Hospital where his mum works. Today she came with family to the scene while his attacker, still unknown, remains on the run. He was just coming back from the surf, stabbed eight times. What on earth is going on? His family choosing to remember a cheeky young man who saw the best in the world. He loved to laugh. Look, more than anything else, he, he just had a heart of gold. He, he really did. Gentle, caring nature was his greatest asset. They want tougher knife laws, but their priority now is to let police find his killer. Best person, you, yeah, that's, that's why it's torn me. A 22-year-old stonemason with a heart of gold. Happy birthday! Kasia Dawn for 10 News First. American campuses are now calm but could still flare at any time after riot police smashed the camps of pro-Palestine protesters. Now global tensions are threatening to spill over here with supporters of both Palestine and Israel holding simultaneous actions within metres of each other. Protesting a protest. A group organised by the Australian Jewish Association marched toward a pro-Palestinian encampment. Most stay within the lines, but a few push through campus security, bringing both sides face to face. For 11 days, this camp has stood on the grounds of Sydney University. Mirroring similar actions overseas, calling for unis to cut ties with Israeli interests. Sydney University has ties uh, to weapons manufacturers like Thales and Raytheon, uh, which, whose weapons are being used right now uh, to rain down on citizens of Gaza. Those supporting Israel claim chants from the camp are anti-Semitic. Concern that this space has become unsafe for Jewish students. 
you know, to the example, we just had someone walk by and yell fascists. While overseas, riot police have moved in, for now, peace remains, at least on this home front. This is not an issue of religion, uh, it's an issue uh, of, of humanity. Chris Campy for 10 News First. US agencies have released a new warning about the threat posed by North Korean hacking collectives. The group is using vulnerabilities in email to target overseas businesses with a focus on academic institutions, think tanks, journalists and not-for-profits. It comes as South Korea has raised the terrorism threat posed by the rogue state. Helping women safely leave violent relationships was top of the agenda when the nation's police ministers and commissioners met today. They discussed improving police responses to high-risk perpetrators, including electronic monitoring. There are no easy answers. It will take efforts across governments of all jurisdictions and all portfolios within those governments to work towards eliminating gendered violence. New South Wales also held an emergency cabinet meeting and will unveil an urgent response package within days. You may have seen a flyer widely shared on social media today, which really puts it all into perspective. It advertises a pilot program. It's aimed at women sleeping in cars, looking for somewhere safe to sleep in your car, it writes, a few nights a week. Well, we spoke to the people... <laughs>